Hey, welcome to Pedal Partners. Violet Oscillation here. And before I go in to record my debut album this year, I thought I'd take a look back at one of my favorite bands, and that is MBV. All the music you're going to hear today is by myself, Violet Oscillation, but you should also check out Paige and Becker's project, Abstract and Sound. They're the first full female shoegaze band. They're great songwriters and musicians, and I help them out a little bit with production. I'm quote unquote their producer. All the visuals and words are original too, so check out shoegaze.store. We also made some sweet ethical shoegaze clothing if you want to support the shoegaze cause in that way. Quick note before I start today, in this film I sing out MBV as the pinnacle shoegaze act, which is what I mean by the line invented shoegaze in the title. For more on the origins of shoegaze, watch my films What is Shoegaze and What is Dream Pop. In those videos, I look into the impact other artists such as Cock Chins, Jesus and Mary Chain and A.R. Kane had on the formation of the genre. So let's go right to the start of this story. Kevin Shields was born in 1963 in New York to Irish parents. He spends the first 10 years of his life there before moving to Ireland at age 10. In 1978, Kevin meets Colm or Koizig at a karate competition, forming the band The Complex later in 1981. Shields' early bands are inspired by punk bands such as Undertones and Public Image Limited. It's around this time that Kevin Shields starts to go to gigs around the local post-punk scene in Dublin, and it's these formative years that influence the early sounds of My Bloody Valentine. My Bloody Valentine proper formed in 1983 with vocalist David Conway. At this stage, the band was inspired by garage rock with bands like The Cramps and The Birthday Party. These influences came across in their debut mini LP, This Is Your My Bloody Valentine. Shields also cites The Ramones, The Cure, Susie and the Banshee, Sonic Youth, Dinosaur Jr., Velvet Underground, and Public Image as big influences in these early years. On songs such as Forever and Again, MBV touch on the gothic side of things with Conway's vocal strikingly similar to the work of Bauhaus. The early version of MBV was very much grounded in post-punk and gothic elements, though the final track of their debut strongly recalls the work of the Doors. Early versions of the band used a Tascam 4-track to make weird backing tracks influenced by the birthday party and incorporating tape-based rhythms. It's this kind of experimentation that we see later on in the band's career. With the addition of bassist Debbie Goog, they released the Geek EP. The CP was even more raw than their first effort, with jangly guitars transmorphing into chainsaws. Conway leaves the band in 1987 and in comes Belinda Butcher on vocals and guitar. This is where the band sound really starts to transform. On songs such as Strawberry Wine, the band recalls the 60s with the sound of jangly guitars and the psychedelics of that era. Belinda adds something that the band hasn't had before with her vocals. The departure of Conway's gothic vocal style gives the songs more room to breathe, with a layered vocal approach starting to take a hold. Kevin Shields has said that the records we made in 87 were not really representative of what we felt we were about. And so it's not until 1988 so you made me realise that the band come out with a genre defining sound. <laughs> Shields' signature glide guitar technique, a highly set tremolo arm into reverse reverb, produces sounds never heard before on the song Slow. On the invention of this technique, Shields says he was first made aware of the jazz master from bands like The Cure. For his first glide guitar effort, he borrowed a red 64 model jazz master from a friend. In Shields' own words, it was only when the band started playing more aggressively with a carefree attitude towards vocals that they found their sound. On their debut album proper, Isn't Anything, released in the winter after the You Made Me Realize EP, the band expand on their signature sound. Opener Softest though starts with a familiar MBV hallmark with the anticipatory drums not too dissimilar to the ones on Only Shallow. Lose My Breath introduces Belinda's signature vocal phrasing. Here we see vocals become more an instrument in themselves. A key philosophy of shoegaze is born here being that vocal showmanship is not at the front of the mix but rather another element for the shoegazer to utilize in melodic expression. Without interjecting too much personal opinion into this exercise of subjectivity, No More Sorry is my favorite song on MBV's debut album. Yes, glide guitar, reverse reverb and fuzz are all important elements of shoegaze but it's this song that has no structural center search, it floats, the music 
it could go on for an eternity. In the words of Shields, the sound the band were going for in their head was so loud and squashed together like an infinite horizon. It goes on and on. Unlike a horizon where your eyesight stops, with sound you can imagine it infinitely. As a whole, the architect himself, Kevin Shields, describes the album as representing freshness in a time and place where new things are happening, whether that be new guitar bands or indeed new exciting genres like hip hop. Most people's introduction to Shoegaze, and perhaps the only Shoegaze album non Shoegazers will know, is 1991's Loveless. The stories surrounding this album are almost as mythical as the music itself. Did it really bankrupt a record label? No, it didn't. But did Kevin Shields really set up tents in the studio in order to capture the sounds in his head? Very much so. By this time, the guitarist has perfected his glide guitar technique. He creates blankets of sound out of reverse reverb and fuzz, a sonic canvas for Belinda to paint her soothing vocals on. Again, not to make this piece too personal, but I think adding a personal perspective can be useful as we all have our own stories about how music affects us. Anyway, it took me a long time to get into love this more than it has really anything, where my attachment to the music of Slow Dive, for example, was instant. With MBV, I was like, what, what are all these weird sounds? I'd never heard a guitar sound like this. Sure, I'd heard an affected guitar. I listened to bands like Slow Dive and Tame Impala, but I'd never heard a guitar used in this way. The guitar here in the music of Loveless is a landscape, which aptly fits into my next point. This album finally clicked with me by listening to it on repeat when I was by the sea. I can picture the album representing the same vastness as the ocean that surrounded me. On songs such as Luma, Shields constructs a guitar sound that not only achieves the common alt rock concept of creating guitar sounds that aren't guitar-y, <laughs> but something else entirely. On Loveless, Shields creates a sonic consistency rarely heard on even the best of albums. It's only when doing something truly unique, as MBV did with Loveless, that a musician can truly transcend the crowd. Loveless is timeless because of its unconventionality. Its songs aren't dated by the chorus or flanger effects that are often found in a lot of 80s and 90s music. <laughs> Its vocals are timeless in very much the same way. We never quite hear what's being said, so there's no way to tie the lyrical themes to a certain decade. Loveless is transcendent in that it doesn't belong to any time, but all time. Conceptually, the song names play with the notion of time as well. See, to hear knows when, sometimes, and soon. It's this very essence of timelessness that allows the band to take a 22 year hiatus and come back sounding the same with 2013's MBV. Kevin actually decided to start work on their latest effort in 1996, which is the year I was born, and uh, a coincidence, I think not. Despite its patchwork of sounds dating from various years, MBV has yet again a very cohesive sound. Distortion isn't used as a statement of aggression as is often the case, but finds its place in songs like She Found Now and Who Sees You as a textural component, a bedrock for the songs to sit on. I hope you've enjoyed listening to this video and watching the sites I've put on screen today. Uh, if you enjoy it, definitely subscribe, hit the bell notification because we have a bunch of other videos like this and more videos to come like this and we just love shoegaze, making shoegaze music. So you should definitely check out our Violet Oscillation and Abstract and Sound projects. We're truly independent artists, so if you enjoy our work, definitely check out our Patreon where we have a bunch of fun stuff and you can also support us by buying through our Ethical Cloven line. It's completely uh, good for people, the planet. We're only like positive vibes here, so uh, see you for some of that next time. And thank you for watching.